Hello and welcome to another of Turtleton's tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at potions in Minecraft, specifically how to get started, and also a look at the tier 1 potions, well as a little bit of splash potions thrown in there to mix. So the very first thing we need to know is how to make ourselves a brewing stand. And that is simply with three pieces of cobblestone and a blaze rod, which you obtain from killing a blaze mob in the nether. This will give us one brewing stand. Yeah, and if I park it down here, you'll be able to see there it is in its full effect. You can right click on it, it gives you the interface here. And a possible note is that this can only be mined successfully using a pickaxe. Now, this should not, by any circumstances, be confused with the cauldron, which is made from seven pieces of iron as such. This is very bad, it is currently useless. About the only practical thing you can do is fill it up with water and have it looking like a block. This is a brewing stand, it is useful. Cauldron, not useful. So, to actually use the brewing stand, we're going to have to get some glass bottles. So, three pieces of glass in a V shape here gives us three bottles. And, while we can, in theory, put them in there, it won't actually do anything at this stage because we need to fill them up with water. Now, you can use a cauldron, so it's not entirely useless. And for every block, you can actually decrease one unit's worth of water, or up to a maximum of three, or you can just use a source cube. There you go, and that gives you three blocks, or three bottles of water. Interestingly, taking water from this does give you a small graphical issue where the item doesn't appear to be registered, so just no. Okay, now, you can place your bottles of water in any of these slots, Wherever you put the bottles in the user interface, they also get represented inside the game, visibly on the stand itself. Now, it's always more efficient to use three bottles of water at one point, because whatever you, whatever reagent you put in the brewing stand will fill up every single bottle. There's really no benefit of using just a single water bottle in the stand. The reagent doesn't give you a quicker brewing time or higher yields. Always use three bottles and you'll get two free potions effectively. So, let's have a look at the reagents first. Here are all the single reagents which you can get simply through the game without any crafting involved. You have melons, spider eyes dropped from spiders, gas tears from guests, gold nuggets either broken down from uh, gold ingots or from uh, zombie pigmen, slime balls from slimes, nether wart obtained from the nether, redstone from redstone ore, glowstone from glowstone ore, and gunpowder from killing creepers. But of course there are a couple of reagents which you need to break down from another item or if you like another source. So you have sugar cane, breaking that down in either a crafting bench or in your inventory will give you one sugar. And a blaze rod will give you two blaze powders. Now there's also a small chance that you might need something which is ha you have to make up. So a single spider eye, a single piece of sugar and a single mushroom will give you a fermented spider eye. This can be crafted, along with to get magma cream you need a slime ball and blaze powder, and to get a glistening melon you need a melon chunk and a gold nugget. So if I quickly just demonstrate this, all you need to do is put these in any order into a workbench, doesn't matter where they go, and it will give you the respective item. There you are. So, on the yellow wall you will see the five basic potions brewing away. And they've already been completed, so here we have the first one. Nether wart will give you the awkward potion. Now the awkward potion has no effect and that's probably why it feels quite awkward. However, it is probably the most fundamental of tier 1 potions, which gets used in a considerable number of the tier 2 potions, or the secondary potions. Then you have the mundane potion, which can be created from a spider eye. 
This again has no effect, uh, but can be used in creating some other secondary potions. Now a word about the mundane potion. You get it not only from the spider eye, but also the glistening melon, blaze powder, and sugar. So probably a, a good rule of thumb is to use sugar instead of these three arguably more expensive and certainly rarer items. As sugar is easy to farm, sugar cane grows quickly, and it's, it's very cheap. So, you also can obtain the mundane potion from brewing redstone. Now, while they appear exactly the same, both with icon and text, the difference is that the redstone mundane potion will give an extended duration or a prolonged effect to the second tier uh, potion which is brewed. However, let's not worry too much about that, just bear in mind that they are different. Next we have Glowstone, which gives us a thick potion. Again, drinking this will have no immediate effect, but it's used for brewing some tier 2 potions. And finally, we have the Fermented Spider Eye, which actually gives us a potion which has an effect, and it is the Potion of Weakness. Now, if I go ahead and drink this, we'll be able to see what it does. So, you see it's now taken away from the stand. You drink it by holding down right-click while not on a brewing stand. You'll drink away, and here we are. You'll see that I am now suffering from weakness for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Now, the weakness effect will decrease my attack damage by 50%, so it halves all my attacks. And if we have a look at myself in third person, you'll see that I have these rather nice smoke lines on me which make me seem to smell somewhat. So, now with this potion has been used up, I can go fill it up with water and use it for another potion, but we'll worry about that later. So, we on this have uh, a demonstration wall. of a splash potion. So, any potion mixed with gunpowder will turn it into a splash potion. And finally, now we're actually brewing something, you can see the brewing action on the left, and the progress bar, or if you like, the time remaining displayed on the right hand side. And splash potions can be thrown. So they'll take the base effect of the weakness, and give it a ranged and area of effect quality. So there we have it. As you can see, the gunpowder's been used up, and the splash potion has been created. So if I just take all of these bottles, and you'll see my weakness, now a minute and 30 seconds later, has depleted. So the arrangement of blocks you see here is the effective working area for a splash potion. So if you throw a splash potion into the center block here, it will cause the effect to be transferred over to any player or any mob in the area. Specifically, in the dark blue squares, it will take the full brunt of the effect, and then it will deplete outwards as you move out through the different colors. So each, le uh, each uh, duller color will give a reduced effect. So if I stand outside of the area, and hopefully land this in the middle, you'll see that I don't actually suffer from any effect of weakness from the bottle. But, standing in this area here, there you go, throwing that in there, I take a roughly about 18, 17 or 18 seconds worth of weakness, which is reduced from the 1 minute and 7 seconds weakness of the splash potion altogether. And there it is, that's going to shortly run out. Once it is, I'll just uh, throw a potion directly up, see if I can catch that. Here we go, and I'm going to take the full duration of the weakness potion caused to me. So splash potions will work with generally any other positive or negative potion, and they'll transpose the positive or negative effect onto a player or a mob. 
So they were our tier 1 potions. In the next tutorial we're going to be looking at tier 2 potions and following that we'll be looking at the tier 3 potions. So this has been Turtleton's Tutorials. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time.